Adrian Ace Baldwin Jr. is coming to Happy Valley. Mike Rhodes lands his first big commitment at Penn State and hits his former player, Ace Baldwin. Now it's just a matter of how good can this team be by going and getting the pieces out of the transfer portal to complement Baldwin. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. My name is Zach Seiko, your host, and I am joined by a special guest for today's show, and that is Pat Korbler of Black Shoe Diaries of SB Nation. Pat, thanks so much. This first time, but I think well overdue with the way that uh, basketball and the transfer portal have been active. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, thanks for having me. But yeah, uh, basketball has been an exciting time going back. I mean, a month now, obviously, since the games and, and going to the Big Ten tournament and March Madness and then Shrewsbury leaving and then hiring Rhodes and now the transfer portal. So exciting time, at least for me as a fan. Maybe not everybody loves the transfer portal, but I, I love it. Lots of news. So exciting time for Penn State basketball. Well, there still could be open tryouts for both of us because they only have three scholarship players as of right now. And just you're kind of fingers crossed. But we're going to talk about it all today with Ace Baldwin Jr. coming in, joining former VCU head coach, now Penn State, Mike Rhodes. Uh, his star player is coming to Happy Valley. That is key because I think he can take on that Jalen Pickett type of role. Uh, but before we move any further, uh, Pat, where can people keep up with your work personally? Because you do a, a great job, you know, writing, social media and everything else. Yeah, obviously, BlackShoeDiaries.com is, is is where I'm writing basketball, football, um, occasionally wrestling, although I don't know wrestling all that well. It's not too much of that, but mostly football and basketball. And then on Twitter, my username is Porbler, P-O-E-R-B-L-E-R. It's my last name, except instead of the K, it's the P, so Porbler on Twitter. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I try to be funny on Twitter, sometimes not so much, but yeah, give me a follow. <laughs> I think I think a lot of your jokes definitely <laughs> land here. So glad glad to have you on the show. If you ha if you aren't following uh, Locked On Nittany Lions on Twitter, it's at Locked On Nittany. My personal is at Zach underscore Seiko. And of course, very excited to continue the partnership with Penn State Rivals. Visit PennStateRivals.com for all of your sources for Penn State athletics. Locked On Nittany Lions now your go to podcast for Penn State Rivals. Okay. Ace Baldwin Jr., he is on the roster. Kanye Clary and Demetrius Lilly is still on the team as well. Not everybody is. We, we just also, and we'll, we'll talk about this too, because Case, Caleb Dorsey just announced his transfer to William & Mary. I think that's a good step for him, just kind of a refresh and everything else. But everyone wants to know about the potential of Ace Baldwin Jr. because you're getting the A-10 Player of the Year. You're getting the A-10 Defensive Player of the Year. You are getting the face of the VCU Rams from just a season ago, a reason why why they were able to secure the A-10. And he's following Mike Rhodes. So there's definitely this, and a majority of the staff, you know, we did, we already lost one member of the staff to Virginia Tech besides the point. But uh, what is Penn State getting in Ace Baldwin Jr. when he arrives in town? Yeah, I mean, like you said, he's the Atlantic 10 player of the year. Um, I think the first thing that really sticks out about his game is 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 just the fact that he's a true point guard. Um, you mm -hmm. look at his stats, right? Has that has had over five assists for the last two years, which in the college game is really impressive, right? You can even look at Jalen Pickett in his first season at Penn State, didn't hit that five assist mark. And I mean, Jalen Pickett was one of the best point guards in all the country, even you know this past season, and even coming into Penn State when he was at Siena, he was a really tremendous point guard. So we'll see how that transition goes for, for Ace, you know, moving from the Atlantic 10 to the Big 10 and going from one of the best A-10 teams to, you know, Best case, a middle of the pack Penn State team, um, how that transition goes. But um, yeah, he's a true point guard. You, you watch his his highlights and it's flashy passes, um, really terrific vision, right? This isn't just, you know, passing it to a guy in the post and and somebody in the post doing a lot of work or, you know, those types of assists. He's really creating opportunities for the rest of what, uh, what was VCU and hopefully will be Penn State once he comes up to Happy Valley. So a true point guard can score a little bit. Still kind of coming along there. Um, his shooting is is very hit or miss sometimes. As a sophomore, he shot 41% from three. Um, this past year, he started off really hot, almost shot 50% through like the first half of the season and then really dipped as the year went along. So I think, you know, becoming a more consistent three-point shooter can kind of help him just because he is on the smaller side at six foot one. 
Um, but a really complete player, great defensive player, was the A10 defensive player of the year as well, kind of leads that attack for, for VCU. So when you look at his game, he's a complete player, an all-around guy, and, and somebody who could be a leader for you know this new era of Penn State basketball. Yeah, Mike Rhodes quoted it as the the head of our snake. So I, I think that's very fitting because he he was the face of your team a year ago. And I, I don't think there's going to be any sort of you know speed change or the game's going to be too fast because because we see players all the time, uh, at least now with the transfer portal, right? And specifically for Penn State, whether it was Andrew Funk coming from Bucknell to Penn State, like I didn't think there was a, a, a huge difference in competition. It's just a matter. It's the league you're playing in. Uh, you're going to, yeah, you're probably going to drop 20 points uh, a night when you play at the likes of Bucknell or Siena. But in this case, I think that given that he's going to have the volume, I think that Ace is going to have a lot of a lot of the offensive production there. Uh, and as you said, kind of an all around game, a diverse type of game. It's not going to be booty ball like it was with Jalen Pickett because he's not a physical. He's not a physical guard. He's more of your finesse speed <laughs> defense. Right. Uh, and Jalen Pickett was always that that physical presence. So I, I like that for Mike Rhodes and in, in this new you're going to get a new system. And I don't think that it's going to be total. It's going to be, yes, defensive oriented. But I think when you bring a guy in a mind like Joe Crispin into the fold, that this is going to be a speed oriented type of team. And Ace Baldwin does just that. Yeah. And, and even for myself, right, when I was looking at different coaches that we could or that Penn State could potentially hire, Mike Rhodes was on my list. And, and it, you know, three years ago, I would have loved Mike Rhodes. This year, I was, I was definitely happy with the hire. Um, was a little concerned just with the fact that, right, Penn State has been playing what is – I prefer as their type of basketball of shooting threes, um, you know, playing, I, mean, I guess their pace wasn't all that fast, but right. Taking a lot of threes because three points is greater than two points. And when you look mm -hmm. at Mike Rhodes and what he's done at BCU, yes, they play fast, but not necessarily great shooters and not shooting a lot of threes, right? They really put a premium on athleticism and, and, and length and size. Um, but when you look at what, what Rhodes has done prior to BCU, when he went to Rice, they took a lot of threes. They were in the top 100 for three-point attempts for all three of the seasons that he was at Rice. So I think when he came back to BCU, it's just kind of the way that BCU has always played, going back to Shaka Smart. Um, mm -hmm. He just kind of wants to stick with that. So I am curious to see what happens at Penn State. And right, Ace Baldwin is a guy that you want to bring in no matter what your system is, right? Just because he is a true point guard and he has such great vision. And if he can be your leader, you're going to take that no matter what style you're playing. So I am curious to see um kind of what they do in the portal now right there's a lot of different vcu guys in there um if they tried to take six if they tried to take seven if they tried to take maybe one or two more and and tried to you know combine the styles that we saw at vcu with what penn state was kind of what was being built here at penn state just because um i don't know if that brand of basketball necessarily would work in the big 10 the way that it did at BCU. And, and, and even for myself, when I watch Ace Baldwin's highlights, he's a great passer and a lot of the stuff is going to the basket. I just kind of think of what his game could be. If you put him with more shooters, allow more spacing for him. Yes. It increases his assist, but it also gives him more space to operate. It could help him, um, you know, driving to the lane and, and, and making pull up jumpers and things like that. That's a perfect teaser there because, uh, yes, Penn State is going to absorb uh, what we think of most of the VCU roster. So in this upcoming segment, let's talk about that, which key players Penn State could look for after Ace Baldwin Jr. But first, a word from our sponsor of today's show, and that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays, they're all back, and there's no better place to get in on some MLB action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. All you got to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything in Major League Baseball. Think Aaron Judge will hit a home run. Max Scherzer goes over on his strikeouts. Sneaky money line picks on an underdog team. You can take any of them. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back. You go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball. 
And once again, thanks so much for making Locked On Nittany Lines your first listen and watch every single day. Pat Korbler of Black Shoe Diaries with SB Nation joining me on the show. And big shout out to our partner, PennState.Rivals.com. Locked On Nittany Lines, now your go-to podcast for Penn State Rivals. Uh, Pat, uh, VC, this is kind of, it's the big fish eats little fish, right? You know, the, everyone was saying, you know, I'm all for Penn State eating the VCU roster. And then VCU is, <laughs> is going to, you know, just kind of, it, it trickles down, you know, taking Utah State and Ryan Odom. I, I'd be surprised how many players uh, actually go from Utah State over to VCU. But it makes a little more sense, right? Because Penn State has always, mainly with football, but that D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, that's always just been a prime recruiting target, mostly because Maryland's just not that good at football. So it's easier for James Franklin. Uh, so thank you for that, Maryland. But that area has just always, because it's not that far, whereas Utah on the other side of the country is going to be a little difficult to recruit players to Virginia Commonwealth. But in this case, it, it's a four or five hour drive, depending on where you're coming from in Virginia to get to Penn state. So, and, and there's players on that VCU roster that are actually from Pennsylvania to begin with. So coming home makes a lot of sense here, but uh, let's start with that VCU roster. There's a, uh, I would say definitely some more preferred players as far as like a Jalen Deloche, uh, a Jameer Watkins. Those I think would be the next two names that you would like Penn State to bring in through the transfer portal. But outside of those guys, are there any other players you would like Penn State to pick up? Yeah, um, right. VCU is a very, very good team, right? Mm -hmm. 12th seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, they did lose to St. Mary's, but uh Ace Bowen actually dealt with, I think it ended up being an ankle or maybe it was just a foot injury during the game. And and once he went down and I do believe he came back, but they weren't the same team once he came back. So, right. If, if you're Penn State and especially considering all the roster space that you have, you're not going to, you know, deny anybody from, or I shouldn't say anybody from VCU, but right. If you can get quality role players that the Rams have um, up here to Penn State, that's unfortunately or fortunately, depending upon your opinion of the transfer portal, something that that Penn State's going to do. Um, you mentioned da Jalen Deloach, um, big man from VCU. I believe he's originally from Georgia, so he's one of the few guys that doesn't necessarily have Northeast ties. Mm -hmm. um, lanky kid, really athletic. <clears throat> Excuse me. He originally started out as as a wing. I believe I read when he was a freshman or sophomore in high school, he was still only 6'1", 6'2", area. Um, he's now up to 6'9", 215, so he's kind of developed into a big man over time. And it definitely shows in his game, right? Both the good and the bad. He has some guard skills. You can see him dribbling on the perimeter. Um, BCU is obviously very much scolded in him that he needs to get down the post, but he's still learning to be a big man. He fell out of six games, I believe, this past season. And I believe, again, I don't have the stats in front of me. Two times he did it in under 20 minutes, which is just like really impressive stuff when you think about it, right? Five fouls in, in under 20 minutes. So he's still learning and coming along as a big man, but, uh, Big, lanky kid, really athletic, um, the type of guy who, once he fully understands the game and, and, and what his role is, is somebody that can average 10 points, 10 rebounds, two blocks, a steal, a steal and a half. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I know that he, I believe he's going to visit Indiana this coming weekend. It looks like Indiana has picked up a couple big men, though, the last mm -hmm. couple of days. And even today, they picked up the five-star kid from Oregon. So I don't know if the Hoosiers necessarily will be somebody that uh, sticks with it for, for Jalen, but Penn State should be getting him on campus soon, and, and we'll see what happens there. Uh, you mentioned Jameer Watkins, who is personally one of my favorite guys as well. He's originally from Jersey, so right has that Northeast connection with Penn State. Uh, just the type of player that everybody would want, right? 6'7", 210, can shoot the three, can dribble, can pass, can play defense, athletic, long. Um, so not Seth Lundy by, by any stretch. I don't mean to compare him to Seth Lundy, but right, a right. Seth Lundy type of player who can do some of the things that, that Lundy was doing at Penn State. Uh, and then probably the two other guys from VCU that I would pay attention to are Nick Kern and Jaden Nunn. Uh, Jaden Nunn was the backcourt teammate of uh, Ace Baldwin. Uh, 6'4", 190, another kid who can shoot a little bit, who can dribble, who can pass, play defense. The kind of sense of theme with all these VCU guys that they're all athletic and they can all play defense. Um, Nunn is originally from Michigan, though, and there hasn't been too much of a buzz about Penn State, at least from what I can gather. So I am kind of curious if another Big Ten team is, is in there, maybe Michigan State, even though though. It seems like Izzo doesn't generally use the portal all that much, but none would yeah. certainly be 
Welcome Division. And then last but not least, like I just mentioned before, Nick Kern. I saw that he's been getting some buzz for Penn State the last the last couple of days. Uh, Kern 6'6", is probably the best athlete on that VCU team, which is saying something. Uh, a really tremendous defender. Him and him and Baldwin kind of went back and forth on guarding the best player as long as it was a guard um, for who VCU was playing. The downside of Kern is that he really cannot shoot the ball at all. He shot 25% <laughs> from three, and I think he only took – eight of them last year so only a sophomore so he does still have two more years right um baldwin has two more years after this yeah the loach yeah. has two more years after this very few of these guys are one and done which you know i think that's also why vcu fans were so upset that Rhodes was leaving just because this really wasn't supposed to be uh an a10 championship type of season they were going to return a lot of a lot of players so kern is probably the most realistic um, player at this point, so we'll see what happens there. But Deloach and Nunn certainly names to know as well. Yeah, uh, how many VCU players do you think Penn State can ultimately pick up out of the portal? Yeah, right. I, I think for Rhodes, it's it's a matter of right. You want to have guys that believe in his message and and what he's trying to build and things like that. But you, I think he also is aware that he's at Penn State, and right, you don't just simply want to take eight or nine guys from from BCU and plot them at Penn State, right? Because he's now trying to build something something different. Um, so I would be just personally surprised. I would be if it's more than four, and I would say mm-hmm. like four at the absolute max, right? If Baldwin's one, uh, maybe you get the Loach and maybe you get Kern, and I don't think they would turn none away. I don't think they would turn Watkins away, but. Um, I just I, I personally can't see can't see more than four. I'd probably put the over under since you're sponsored by FanDuel. I probably put the over under <laughs> at three and a half and 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 might stick with the under there. Uh, I just think Rhodes kind of wants to not do his own thing at Penn State, but right build the program in in a different way. And right, taking some of these VCU guys makes sense, but uh, seeing what happens with the rest of the roster, if Jamil Brown and Evan Mahaffey and Keba come back, that obviously impacts things. And Penn State is still going after tons of other guys um, in the portal that don't have any VCU connections as well. So I think that's like something like 20 or 25 percent of all college basketball players in the portal. So it's a difficult balance of keeping the Penn State guys, keeping track of the VCU guys, but then also making sure that you're you know checking on uh, players from other colleges, too. So I wouldn't expect a mass exodus of guys from Richmond to state college, but two, three, maybe even four players kind of seems like the sweet spot for Rhodes. This is a name that you didn't mention, but just because I mentioned the Pennsylvania connection and that's it because he's from the Poconos and that's Christian Furman who didn't really have uh, that much of a presence uh, this past season with VCU, but still kind of a young, I feel like a multiple player, right? Six foot 10. He was a four star, um, just a, a, a very good prospect who, you know, you see some of these guys mature in year three, like it, it, everyone wants to the true freshman, the rookie to, to start out and be incredible right out of the gate. So when someone has to like actually sit back and learn, it's almost, it's almost strange. And then year three, year four, they actually turn it on after they uh, go through that red shirt. So you teased it again final segment about the current Penn State players, both who were not in the portal and then the ones that are that haven't just frankly committed anywhere uh, just because they're weighing their options. And then players that are on other rosters that could be transferring to Penn State, as you mentioned, outside of that VCU cluster, that they are targeting a bunch of different players that could fit in at Penn State and what Mike Rhodes wants to do differently now with, yes, a different coaching staff. Uh, and, and yes, I think it's going to be a little bit of a different philosophy. I know it is. I, I just know it is. It's not going to be this there's still going to be elements, but it's not going to be so overt where it's this grind you down uh, defense. And then the so everyone's worried about the slow pace, mediocre offense. And I, I don't see that. I, you don't bring in someone like a Joe Crispin who was, was offense, 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 getting his teams over 90 points per game when he was the head coach at Rowan to come in and say like, all right, let, let's continue with the slow pace and, and play along with the Big Ten. It's just the way the game of basketball is changing. Everyone wants to know about the Penn State players just because, well, Penn State fans are most familiar with them and, and they're players that, frankly, I want to stick around. I think a Kebajai could fit very well in a Mike Rhodes system. I think Jameel Brown is one of those players that, yeah, it was pretty quiet in his first season, but Penn State had a lot of players that were just better than him in the backcourt. Um, so what, Pat, what are you gathering as far as, you know, I, I'm not at, 
asking necessarily if you know, okay, how close is Keba to following Micah Shrewsbury to Notre Dame? Same thing with Jamil Brown, same thing with Evan Mahaffey, but just are, are you getting the sense that these players are looking to leave or they are just kind of weighing their options, having conversations, but ultimately it seems like they could say what's, what's your feel about that? Yeah. Right. I think, it, I think it's different for every guy and, and, Obviously, they all have ties to Micah or they all have ties to Adam Fisher, who's at Temple. So it, it's tough to gauge just who's realistically staying and who's not. Um, I think it's, you know, first and foremost, I, I I don't think that Mike Rhodes would turn down any of them. Right. The three guys that had entered Jamil Brown, Evan Mahaffey and, and Keba. I think if all three or any of the three want to come back, he would welcome them with with open arms. So it's certainly not a case of, of Penn State pushing these guys away. Uh Rhodes and the rest of the staff, I'm sure, are doing everything they can to to get these guys back in there. Um, Jamil, I know he was really tight with Adam Fisher, and he did visit <clears throat> he did visit Temple this past weekend. So mm-hmm. I'm guessing that in the next couple of days, we'll start to hear things on if he's going to be sticking at Penn State, if he's going to be taking more visits, or if he's going to move on to Temple. Um, he was in the photos, although it was in the background. It was blurry in the the basketball yeah. workouts. The one <laughs> I don't even want to say practice because I don't think it was much of a practice when you only have five or six guys. Uh, so I think that's a good sign. Um, we haven't really heard anything about Evan, uh, Evan Mahaffey, which I find interesting just because if I personally was ranking uh, Brown, Keba and Mahaffey, who I think would generate the most interest in the portal despite Keba being, you know, the more highly tatted prospect, at least last mm-hmm. year, I personally think it would be Mahaffey just because again, six, 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 seven can kind of, he can play big. He can play as a wing um, kind of showed a little bit as a three point shooter, at least the potential to be a three point shooter. So the fact that he's been very quiet and we haven't heard anything about potential schools going after him again, maybe it's the optimistic side of me, but I find that to be a good sign for, for Penn state or at least Penn state's chances that he's thinking about sticking around and then I know Keba dropped a couple schools that are showing interest in him. Indiana <clears throat> being one of those uh, doesn't seem like the Hoosiers will be involved moving forward, but I know Texas was was in there too. So we'll see what happens with Keba and and obviously Notre Dame's going to be a player too. Um, not really sure what's going to happen with Keba. I think the original thinking was that he would probably be the most likely one to follow. But again, all these guys have ties to that previous staff, right? Jamil Brown followed uh, Micah from mm-hmm. Purdue to Penn State. Me- Evan Mahaffey is an Ohio kid, so he doesn't necessarily have you know super close ties to Penn State or Penn State basketball. So uh, we'll see what happens on those three. But I think you know you're you're happy that Demetrius Lilly is sticking around, and it seems that Kanye and Clary is also sticking around as well. So out of all out of all five of those freshmen, I think that Kanye Clary is the one that would fit in best with Mike Rhodes's system because just because of the speed, the nature of, yes, you'll have, I mean, look at it. You had Jalen Pickett, who was the primary ball handler, but then it was Kanye Clary as the next guy. And that was as a true freshman. So it, oh yeah, well they have Ace Baldwin Jr. They don't, they don't need Kanye Clary anymore. No, that's not the case. You definitely need that next guy to be your, because you don't want, ace to have to run 40 minutes every single game you want him to be able to to take some time off or at least just move into a different role so that he isn't constantly uh the ball handler and just i think with the speed that this penn state team is going to run at kanye clary fits in the best and that's probably the conversation they had with him because i expected him to be the fourth guy (laughs) to move into the transfer portal i don't have a read on demetrius Lilly against somebody that is a good prospect has i think you know a body to grow into and somebody that you just don't know. So clearly Mike Rhodes and his staff have had a message for both Clary and Lily that have just resonated with them, but you won't know. And then at any point in time, those guys could put their name in the transfer portal as well. If something, I don't want the people might sit back and listen to us and say like, Oh good. Clary and Lily, we know that they're guaranteed to be back. They're not. They just haven't put their name in the transfer portal yet. Just even right two years ago, Isaiah Brockington put out, you know, the, the whole graphic from Penn State basketball saying that he's returning. And then I think yeah. 10 days later, <laughs> he jumped back in the portal. So uh, yeah, nothing, nothing's uh, guaranteed, especially, you know, just with any 19 or 20 year old, but especially when you throw in NIL happenings nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. These guys can always jump in, but right. It's a positive sign that, that they're not in yet. And, and I couldn't agree with you more on, you know, ensuring or making sure that Clary stays here. I think he's the type of guy. He almost kind of reminded me of Myron Jones his freshman year, mm-hmm. where it was like 
this kid can get anywhere on the court. It's just a matter of he needs to figure out how to get his shot off in the right way. Because I feel like Clary so often during that Big Ten tournament, he would drive and he would get right around the basket, but just didn't have something to go to to get his shot off. So he's a kid that, you know, over time, I could absolutely see being a double digit scorer. And, and I think playing behind and playing with Baldwin will certainly help this game. Yeah, he's and he's easily the fastest player on the floor for, for both Penn State and, and the team that they're playing on a given night. So um, having that speed element and he'll improve his defense, I think, with Mike Rhodes. Hopefully, I would say if I want anybody to stay, I would say it's Kanye Clary because in the game, this game of basketball, this age, you can never have too many people that are capable in the backcourt. So uh, Pat, before I let you go, the, that second part of this is to talk about the players that they could try to bring in from other schools that uh, are not affiliated with VCU that aren't affiliated with them. Maybe they are with the Virginia area, but just other players that they're looking across the entire uh, landscape of college basketball. I'm not asking you to predict who you think they'll land, but who you want them to land. Sure. Uh, so Despite the fact that Penn State, right, has like 12, 11, 10 scholarships to fill, uh, Penn State is rather quiet on the, the transfer portal trail. And maybe that's because they want to be. I know, especially in football, I know James Franklin was very adamant to, to potential transfer portal guys not to tweet out that you have an offer. Um, that doesn't necessarily happen as much, at least from what I see in basketball. Yeah. Um, so, Obviously, there could be more guys that they're involved with that we don't even know about, but just kind of the names that stick out to me, Noah Thomason from Niagara. Uh, Niagara is in the, the MAC, the MAAC. He led that conference. That was the conference that St. Peter's played in, that Iona played in this past year. Um, he led that conference in scoring at 19.5 points per game. Uh, really talented scorer, obviously. A little bit, I don't I don't want to call him booty ball because he, it's not really like a post-up game, but similar to Pickett where he's just like, I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to get into the paint. I'm just flat out stronger than the guy that's that's guarding me. Um, he has really good numbers off the catch, which I, which I also, uh, which I always personally like to see when it comes to these guys that are coming from smaller divisions, just because, you know, if you're the leading scorer at Niagara, or you're leading scorer at Santa, or you're leading scorer at wherever, and you're making that move up, chances are you're not going to have the ball as much. You need to be able to, to move without the ball and and to score off the catch. So he is he does have very nice numbers shooting off the catch, um, which I think translates well to what his role would be more so at Penn State than when he necessarily did at Niagara. Um, Zach Hicks from Temple is a big wing that that shoots tons and tons of threes. Uh, not necessarily the mover, the the shooter off of off of uh, movement that Andrew Funk was, but if Penn State's priority is to find Andrew Funk 2.0, I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen. Um, but really good shooter, um, shot almost 36 percent on seven attempts per game at Temple, six seven 185. So a lanky wing could maybe even play some small ball four for you would be a really nice get. R.J. Lewis in in that similar vein is a is a freshman from UMass. He's originally from Miami, so doesn't necessarily have that Northeastern Tyler than spending this past year at UMass, but is another kid that's 6'7", 196, um, can shoot the three, has a nice shooting profile as a free throw shooter. Um, so again, just like the type of guy similar to Jameer Watkins, just the lanky, athletic shooter type of guys that you want to get. Um, and then as far as biggest go, Penn State has been mentioned with too many guys. Um, Josh Cohen from St. Francis ended up at UMass, oddly enough, so he's now going to be off the board. There was one name at VCU that they were going after that I haven't seen mentioned with Penn State yet. Um, Steve Settle, he's from Howard. He's six foot 10, 180 pounds, like legitimately yeah. six foot 10, 180 pounds, so <laughs> Complete string being a uh, really unique game, though. He can shoot the three. He only shot 30.3% from three this past year, but as a big, he was taking 3.4 per game. So as a big, can stretch the f can stretch the floor. Good rebounder, good shot blocker, can move his uh, feet defensively. Um, right, I don't think he's a guy that can play the five full time, but just as you know, a bench option maybe. Maybe he plays the four as a starter. Um, just an intriguing kid. So you know. The, the portal goes on and on throughout the month of April and, and into May. Um, a lot of these kids, more so than the past, are taking visits just because the transfer portal kind of did pop up or became popularized during 
COVID times. So, so often two or three years ago, kids were just doing the virtual tours and doing Zoom meetings and things like that. Nowadays, it does seem like these kids want to go out there and, and physically visit the school more. So it is more elongated of a process than it's been. So more names will pop up. Um, we'll, we'll see some kids visiting Penn State and we'll get a better idea. But in the early going, um, you're right, Ace Baldwin was was the, the, the main priority, the main target. So getting him should hopefully start to lead into some other guys, VCU guys and 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 guys from other schools too yeah hopefully he can play a little bit of follow the leader here and bring some bring yeah. some uh complimentary parts to a penn state team that desperately needs them or else again uh open open tryouts will be at a rec hall very soon for penn state and i think uh you and i could uh have a shot at it i think, uh, I'm, that, out, I think I'm out of eligibility but yeah, I'll yeah. Shoot a cool three. why not <laughs> pat korbler on the other side black shoe diaries sp nation again pat where can you know i i laid it all out there but where can people keep up with all of your work yeah, blackshoediaries.com, part of SB Nation, um, right about Penn State basketball and Penn State football. We'll be updating anything that's happening with the portal probably two to three times a week, so definitely check it out there. And then on Twitter, you can follow me at Porbler, P-O-E-R-B-L-E-R. That's Porbler, P-O-E-R-B-L-E-R. All right, Pat, appreciate the time, appreciate the uh, perspective, and hopefully I can get you back on sometime soon, especially as this uh, men's basketball roster fills, fills out. Definitely, yeah. Thanks for having me, Zach. Love what you what you guys are doing at the Locked On pot, or Locked On Nittany Lions podcast, and and I know that you're now with Rivals, so that's that's big for you guys. So congratulations on that, and yeah, definitely have me on whenever. Talk basketball, talk football. I'm a big fullback advocate, so if I can spread fullback awareness on you know whatever platform I can, I'm always down for that. So no, I really appreciate it, Zach.